Hey, Ellie. I can't seem to find the new information on those aliens. Oh, I must have left them in the lab. Do you want me to grab them? Nah, I need you to keep helping me here. I'll just send one of the girls down to get it. Hey, Kelsey. What? Do you want to do me a favor? Oh, sure. Just go down to my lab and grab the papers on the desk for me. Roger that, sir. And where are you going? I'm sorry, but have you met Kelsey? I'm gonna go help her. Just don't touch anything. We really don't want to get in any trouble. Right, right. Papers is what? Do you specify? There's so many here. Someone needs to teach him some organizational skills. <laughs> What are you doing? New project active. Kelsey? I'm sorry! Welcome back to Redesigning Gildelman Mew Mew. Today I'm tackling five more members of the original GMM team. The little animatic you just saw pretty much is the explanation for why there are even more Mew Mews on this team. So let's not waste any more time and hop right in. Starting off, we have Mew Marissa. She's still Ashley's twin sister, but wasn't infused during the first Mew project. Marissa would be the leader of this second team here, and would often butt heads with her younger sister. Marissa's a very tell-it-like-it-is person, and just like her sister, she's headstrong and sassy, and can also be a little bit of a hothead. Since Caitlyn, or Kelsey, activated the Mew project again, now the five Mew Mews would have to be on the lookout for five new Mew Mews. At one point or another, probably when they're leaving their job at the cafe, the Mew Mews would be discussing this fact, and the alien characters would overhear them, and they'd make a plan to try and recruit the new Mew Mews to their side to gain a bit of an advantage. So the three aliens would decide to split up and trail the Mews. The main alien would follow Ashley, Deanna, and Caitlin, and the other two would split up between following Sarah and Christine. Now, after getting home from the cafe, Ashley would come into contact with her sister, and while they have some sort of sibling witty banter Disney Channel style thing going on, she would notice the strange Mew mark on Marissa's neck. Ashley would then find an excuse to go to her room so she could call Caitlin and Deanna and tell them that she thinks Marissa is also a Mew Mew. The alien would overhear this and begin plotting. Now, at school the next day, the main trio would try and find a way to isolate and talk to Marissa, but they can't seem to find a way to get her to take time away from Ariana, who's always hanging around her. Eventually, Ashley, Deanna, and Caitlin would just give up trying to talk to her on her own, and Deanna and Caitlin would insist Ashley does it when they're home alone. Cut to Ashley and Marissa getting off the bus together, and Ashley tries to stop and talk to Marissa while they're walking down the street to their house, but she doesn't get a very long time to do this because an alien shows up to attack. Ashley uses it as an excuse to give her sister a pendant and tells her to transform. Of course, Marissa's like, what the heck is this? Are you insane? But eventually she actually does transform and together they fight the alien and win. I actually imagine sometime during that battle, they would actually have some sort of combined attack, sort of like how Ichigo and Barry have their own combined attack in a la mode. The episode would ultimately end with Marissa saying some sort of witty line along the lines of, so I guess we should probably talk about this whole Mew Mew thing, huh? For Marissa's new outfit, I tried to keep the spirit of the old one in there, but make it a little less revealing and have it match Ashley's a bit more. Her crop top ended up becoming a corset that now has a sweetheart neckline, and I gave her little bows on the side to add a little bit of cuteness. Instead of gloves, I had her match Ashley by having the bracelets, and I also like the idea of keeping the tights, but having them underneath the leg garter instead of just not having a leg garter at all. Finally, her hair is a bob cut with bangs that match her sister's, but the cowlick actually goes the opposite direction of Ashley's. Her weapon was originally a lot like Ichigo's, but a circle instead of a heart. I actually decided to keep it that way, but make it just a little bit cooler. Finally, her new name is Mew Lavender, and her real name is Maya. Next up would be Ariana. Now, originally she was one of the final four Mew Mews that were revealed, but I'm changing things around a little bit. Now, Ariana is a fun-loving girl, and she's Marissa's best friend. The two usually get in all kinds of trouble together. Ariana has a bubbly personality and is an empathetic and supportive person. Now 
that Marissa knows about the Mew Mews, she's eager to find out if her best friend is one too. Ashley tells her not to get her hopes up because there are hundreds of people that could be Mew Mews, but Marissa shrugs her sister off and just asks Ariana point blank if she has any weird new marks on her body. And then she shows her the Mew mark on her neck as an example. Meanwhile, Ashley's freaking out about the secret that her sister is potentially revealing until Ariana says, Oh my gosh, yes! In one of the quickest Mimi reveals ever, Ariana agrees to come to the cafe after the school to officially become part of the team. After being given the whole rundown of everything, the team gets word of an alien attack, and being super eager to try out her new Mew Mew powers, Ariana rushes off. The team follows behind her, and they try to fight off the attack, but things go south when Marissa and Ariana keep fooling around and causing the team to miss attacks. The alien ends up running away with their chimera to find another place to attack. Ashley gives Ariana and Marissa some sort of speech about taking things more seriously, and the alien attacks are not the time to be fooling around. The main team of five would go in search of the new alien while Ariana and Marissa are left to think about things. They agree that they were both treating being a Mew Mew as more of a game and decide to try again, but take it a little bit more seriously. The two end up going out to search for the aliens themselves and end up finding it before any of the other Mew Mews. They call for backup and begin attacking the Chimera. They actually end up defeating it by themselves, and when the others show up, Ashley apologizes for being so hard on them. But she's glad that they were so easily able to defeat the Chimera. Ariana's outfit, the only thing that I really kept the same were her skirt and her shoes. Her top became more like a tailcoat and her gloves are now full gloves that resemble Ichigo's instead of the furry ones that she had before. I kept her cotton candy color scheme and her ears and tail now actually resemble the red panda that she's infused with. For a weapon, I did keep her bow and arrow but made it combined with a harp similar to Minto's. Her Mew name is Mew Cotton Candy and her new name is Anita. Next up, we have Mew Haley. Haley's a theater nerd, but like one of those stuck up theater girls that thinks they're so popular. She has a big ego and a lot of attitude. The only person that she has a real soft spot for is her best friend, Jessie. The two of them are practically inseparable. Haley's episode would probably come after a couple of like filler episode sort of things if this was a real show. Essentially, the Mew Mews would have been looking for new members for a while, but would have had no luck since Ariana. Eventually, rumors start circulating around their school that there's a ghost that shows up in the auditorium after play rehearsals. But some other creatures actually claim it to be like a Mothman creature. The only consensus that the school has is that it's scaring people away from the theater after hours. The girls decide to check it out in case it's a chimera, because obviously this sounds like a chimera to them. But when they arrive, they are met with an unnatural gust of wind blowing at them from the auditorium. But that doesn't stop them from entering. The seven girls push through the wind and go back into the auditorium. Immediately, they're met with something quickly attacking them while the wind continues to blow. Sarah uses her shields to guard the team against the attacks, but Marissa is just fed up and flies over the top of the wind and down to its source. On the stage, Marissa finds Haley with these big butterfly wings. She's using them to create the wind that's blowing at all the other girls. Marissa's surprised to see it's not a chimera, and Haley's surprised to see another Mew Mew there. She stops using her wings to create that gust of wind, and that gives the other girls the chance to fight back against whatever else is currently attacking them. But when they do that, they're shocked to see Mew Jesse there. The seven girls demand an explanation from the two new girls. Haley says that they're using the theater for extra practice for the school musical, and they just use their powers to scare off anyone who's trying to stop them from doing that. Sarah would make some sort of remark about how selfish it is that they're doing that, and Deanna would say that they shouldn't be using their powers in that sort of way. Haley wouldn't really care, and she would say something about doing whatever she can to get ahead before taking Jesse and leaving the theater. Haley's story with Jesse's will continue in Jesse's portion of this, so for now, I do want to talk about her new design. Haley used to have this long blue dress that was frayed at the ends, 
but I decided to shorten that significantly and add fur onto the bottom of the trim to like kind of resemble the frayed dress. She now has half gloves instead of the furry fingerless one she used to have. Her color scheme was kept the same, I just added a bit more detail to her wings to actually resemble the Carner Blue Butterfly that she's infused with. Her weapon itself was originally a wand, so I wanted to keep that, but I added sort of a clarinet shape to it to make it a bit more interesting. Finally, her Mew name is Mew Sorbet, and her name would be Harmony. Let's move on to Jessie to complete the story. Jessie is loyal to her friends, and she loves to have fun. Her favorite thing to do is dance, and she's also in the drama club with Haley, but her main focus is on dancing instead of acting, so she mainly only does the musicals. Jessie would also sometimes do dance competitively, but she did it more for the fun instead of whether or not she would win. So when we last left off, Haley and Jessie were leaving the auditorium. On their way home, they would be abruptly stopped on their drive when the aliens would stand in the road in front of them. They would ask if Haley and Jesse wanted to join them, promising that they could use their Mew Mew powers however they wanted, and that the aliens could help them get whatever they want, even if that means getting ahead in life or whatever Haley's actually looking for. Haley would agree to try it out. Jesse wouldn't be as sure about it, but Haley would convince her in the end. The aliens would tell them to just help out with the next attack as sort of a trial run but they would also be planning in the background how to actually use the Mew Mew's powers for their own. Jessie would spend the whole night wondering if she actually made the right choice, and the next day would be relatively normal for most of the girls, until the aliens decide to attack. The Mew Mews all rush to the scene where they see Haley and Jessie standing there. The two attack alongside the aliens in their chimera, but eventually one of the aliens grabs Haley. He uses an infuser mixed with the Mew Aqua that they have found and attaches it to Haley's back. It corrupts her and turns her into some sort of human butterfly hybrid monster thing. Jessie gets freaked out and apologizes to the Mew Mews because she didn't know that that would happen. With the two chimeras to fight now, the Mew Mews would have to split up into two teams of four. While fighting, Jessie would plead with Haley to remember herself and she would avoid attacking her directly. The battle would be hard, but the other Mew Mews would persuade Jessie to finally use her weapon. When she does that, she's able to bring Haley back to normal. The aliens would leave in defeat, and when Haley wakes up, her memories would be blurry, but she would know that she did something wrong. Haley would then apologize for all the trouble that she's caused, and Jessie would say, If it's alright, we'd like to join your team, and maybe you can forgive us for what we did. Everyone would be kind of reluctant to agree until Caitlin breaks the ice and says that everyone just needs to chill out and that the team would be happy to have them. In terms of her looks, Jessie got a complete overhaul. Her plain brown dress is now an overall style bloomers with a crop top. Because of her sporty nature, I gave her bracelets that kind of resemble sweatbands and her shoes are supposed to look a bit like tap shoes. I did mix around the colors a bit so the dark brown is more of the primary color with the tan taking more of a back seat. For her weapon, I was kind of inspired by her ending up looking like Pinkie Pie a bit, so I gave her a cannon that looks like a drum or some sort of party popper. Her name would be Mew Paprika, and her real name is Josie. Another Mew that came from the original Final Four that I'm now moving to this team is Emily. Emily's a student that recently transferred to the school. She doesn't really know that many people and she's kind of shy. She tends to keep to herself and she's kind of a loner. She finds comfort in books though and she loves to write. With the sudden appearance of the new substance known as Mew Aqua in Haley and Jessie's story, suddenly the stakes are raised a little bit. Elliot wants the team to find some Mew Aqua so he can study it and, like, find out what it actually does, but to still keep a lookout for that last Mew Mew. All of the Mews think that finding any of that Mew Aqua is going to be tough, and some of them are beginning to think that being a Mew Mew is a lot more work than they thought it would be. 
Motivations are kind of low, that is, until they go to school the next day. Christine's in her English class when she notices the new girl holding something small and shiny. To her, it looks just like the Mew Aqua that they saw in the previous battle. She approaches her and asks about it, but Emily's being super secretive and really doesn't want to talk to her. Christine gives up for now, but she texts Deanna to meet up with her later to talk about it. Together, the two of them decide to ask Emily about the gemstone again. They say that they just like how the gemstone looks and that it's really pretty, and they just want to know where she got it. Emily agrees to show the two of them after school. So, they go to a small creek by her house, and they find a lot more Miyuakwa there. Christine and Deanna are excited that they found some, and they thank Emily profusely. That is, until an alien shows up, and that alien also sarcastically thanks her. Deanna tells Emily to run, but she gets caught by the alien. When the alien can't actually take Emily's spirit, though, Christine wonders if she might be a Mew Mew. Deanna decides that she's willing to take the chance and transforms. She's able to get Emily back from the alien while Christine transforms. Since they couldn't get Emily's spirit, the alien decides to go with a backup plan that's enhanced by the Mew Aqua around them. Christine and Deanna do their best to fight while Emily runs away. While she's running, the Mew Aqua in her pocket begins to glow. Emily takes it out and looks at it before gaining some sort of inner confidence and she ends up running back to fight. The Mew Aqua seems to react with her and she ends up being able to transform into Mew Emily. She ends up fighting together alongside Deanna and Christine, and the three of them are able to defeat the Chimera and chase off the alien. Emily would be very scared about what's happening to her and she doesn't really understand, but Deanna and Christine would reassure her that everything's okay and they'd explain the entire thing to her. Emily's also gotten a complete overhaul of her character as well. Her hair is now pulled up and her outfit is much less revealing. Her top has an asymmetrical bottom with frills that tie into a bow, and her gladiator sandals are now replaced with heels that have a lot more frills. Her original weapon were clamshells that were similar to Lettuce's castanets, but I decided to change her weapon and now they're maracas where she can actually pull off the top of it and use it as a grenade sort of thing. The grenades do grow back after use, so she kind of has an unlimited supply of them. Her Mew Mew name is Mew Kiwi, and her new name is Eloise. Well, that's it for this team. We have four more girls to go, so look forward to the next installment of Gildal and Mew Mew Redesigned. Mm -hmm.